After an exhausting 20 hour drive from California, we have finally made it to Texas. But here's the kicker. We're still without a truck or our fifth wheel to start road life that we've been dreaming of. It feels like we're stranded in purgatory between our past adventures and future journeys. We've sailed the open waters of the world, free as can be. And now we're longing to roam the roads of North America. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Brian. I'm Katie. Today we've got a super excited video lined up for you. We're taking you on an adventure through some of the Dallas areas. So whether you're curious about things to do, places to visit, or why so many people are moving here, we've got you covered. Plus we'll be giving you some of the facts, local history, and a little bit of the lowdown on some of the schools around here. Not to mention, barbecue. All right, let's jump into this Texas-sized adventure. I say Texas-sized. Before we do, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button before we continue on this adventure. Alright, so it's time to find out about this whole car thing that my brother's got in his garage. This should be a cool story. Are we recording? Are we recording? Are we recording? Live. 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 <laughs> uh, so what's the story with this car? This was our grandpa's car. It's a 1930 Model A. Um, he did a little bit of hot rodding action on it. He put some aftermarket header, had a motor built for it that isn't, it's an original Model A motor. It's not the original motor, but it is in a Model A motor. It's all fairly original except for the rear end, the motor, everything else is fairly stock. So that's the way I was going to leave it. That's the way, you know, my mom had it before I had it and he unfortunately never got to drive it because he couldn't get it to run, but we're still working through some bugs on it, as you can tell, <laughs> but we're making ground. <laughs> Our family has pretty much been building and working on cars our whole lives. This Model A is the oldest car Eric has ever worked on, so it was great to see he hadn't lost his touch with figuring out the last few issues with the car and getting our grandfather's last car build up and running. The 1930 Ford Model A is a beloved piece of American automotive history. Admire for its practicality, style, and the significant role it played in advancing car design and technology. This is the, when you're braking, that side still locks up a little bit. Yeah, I think the proportioning ball needs to be One of the most memorable features of a Model A is its distinctive Auga horn. The Ford Model A was introduced in 1927 as a replacement for the incredibly popular Model T. The Model A is designed to be more stylish and modern, with a focus on improved performance and a comfort with a base price of $500. The Model A was powered by a 3.3 liter four-cylinder engine that produced about 40 horsepower which was a big improvement over the previous Model T's 20 horsepower engine. No! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get out and push. This should probably be one of the easiest cars we've ever pushed. What'd you do? Why'd you have to break it, huh? <laughs> the Model A became a favorite among hot rodders in the 1940s and 50s due to its sturdy frame and availability of parts. 
Many were modified for higher performance and the car remains popular in the classic and custom car community to this day. Well, it looks like Eric's got a little bit more work to do on this one, so we'll just get it pushed back in the garage and let him have at it. You guys need another hand? Yeah. Okay. Why are you so dressed up today? For the cows. So they know that I appreciate them and I'm on their team. <laughs> if you don't know, Katie loves cows. He's making fun of me because I like filming the cows. Every time, every, every time there are cows, every time there's cows, Katie's got to film it. Cows. We've got we've got eight hours with a cow video. <laughs> but I love cows. They're my favorite painting subject. Dutch painting of cows. That's cow? what I love. Yeah. All my art degrees, everyone's like, oh, what's your favorite painting? What do you like? Expecting something weird. No, it's cows. Uh, where are we going today? Stockyards. Stockyards in stock Fort Worth. The Fort Worth Stockyards are one of the most iconic historical sites in Texas. Representing the rich cowboy culture and history of the American West. The Fort Worth Stockyards were established in the late 1800s as a major hub for cattle trading. But why here? Well, it's because of the city's proximity to the railroads. This made it the perfect location for livestock exchange. In 1976, the Fort Worth Stockyards were designated as a National Historic District, thus preserving its significance as a part of Texas history. One of the biggest draws for visitors is the twice daily cattle drive down Exchange Avenue, where cowhands drive longhorn cattle just as they did in the 1800s. The Livestock Exchange Building, built in 1903, became the hub for cattle traders and ranchers. Thus, it was nicknamed the Wall Street of the West. Visitors can stay in historic locations such as the Stockyards Hotel built in 1907, which has housed famous figures like Bonnie and Clyde. Through live cattle drives, museums, western themed stores, saloons, and barbecue, the Stockyards offer a glimpse into the cowboy way of life. We're about to go in for our first barbecue. Oh yeah. The Fort Worth Stockyards is a place where visitors can experience the legacy of the American cowboy while enjoying modern entertainment and Texas hospitality. That barbecue was spectacular. So what did you think of the barbecue? 10 pounds of happiness in my belly. <laughs> After Katie and I are done playing with the dogs today, we thought we'd go check out a distillery that's close by and uh, do a little whiskey tasting today. <laughs> so we're here at Bent Whiskey, getting ready to take our tour. 
and uh, we've got a couple drinks coming. This should be pretty fun. So, I wasn't ever really into whiskeys uh, when I was younger. I drank vodka for the most part, but we lived above a whiskey bar uh, when we were back in California. And one of the bartenders that worked at the other restaurant next door, he also worked there and it was a friend of mine. I finally went down there and asked him to uh, teach me about whiskeys and what the big deal was. Two drinks later, I was a fan, and that changed my whole world to fun places like this. Sweet, it's like perfect. Nice. Yeah, like a little tart, kind of that whiskey tang and tartness. A little bit sweet. That's a good balance. What did you get? The applejack old fashioned. All right, I got the black cherry old fashioned, which the bartender commended me on my choice. I don't ever really like the first swallow and the first taste of whiskey on my tongue. It takes the it takes one it takes one palating of whiskey on my tongue and then everything kind of shifts to oh yeah, maybe that's because I drink vodka for so long. I don't know. But it wasn't bad. The first taste wasn't bad. Sip was great. <laughs> yeah, see, much better on the second. Now my tongue isn't, you know, my tongue just is like sharp, you know. Which is one of the reasons why I hated whiskey growing up when I would, you know, somebody had whiskey at a party or something, everybody obviously did shots all the time. That's the absolute wrong way to drink whiskey. I want to put a scoop of ice cream in the black cherry old fashioned. That'd be really good. Yeah. After finishing our cocktails, it was time for a distillery tour. Meet Chris, our guide for the day. He gave us some fascinating insights into Bent Distillery and the history of whiskey in Texas. It's been warm in here. So the story behind Bent is pretty interesting. Two Marine Corps friends, after a whiskey-filled night, laid the foundation for what would become Bent Distillery. They started distilling rum. However, in 2013, Texas law changed. It allowed distillers to offer samples, sell cocktails, and bottles directly to customers. With this new freedom, they pivoted to whiskey. This thing behind us looks like the submarine from Extreme, from Lee. Yeah, yeah, that one. What is that thing? My exploration part. That's okay, I, I can still see her face. Oh, will she now? I just took a sip of the bourbon that I was given from the gentleman. I don't know how to explain that one. In 2020, during the pandemic lockdown, Bent stepped up for their community, turning their alcohol into hand sanitizer for first responders and the public for free. Being an essential worker during the pandemic, I deeply appreciate this gesture. After the tour, we sat down, sampled their various whiskeys, and had some great conversations with folks from all over Texas. Everyone we met was friendly, and the laughter made the day even more memorable. It's about time a whiskey bourbon cream came out and was starting to be mixed into some uh, hot chocolate. <laughs> We always love supporting good people and small businesses. All right, before we dive into why so many are moving to Texas, 
Let's take a moment to appreciate the original Texans. You know, the ones with the really big feet and really tiny arms. Ladies, are you ready to go see some dinosaurs? Yep. Let's go do this. Don't forget the rocks. Yeah, the rocks. Oh yeah, don't forget the rocks. That's right, the dinosaurs. They were the first to enjoy the wide open spaces, but unfortunately they didn't stay around for the affordable housing or no income tax. If you're wondering why so many people are packing up and moving to Texas, especially from states like California, it's not just about saving a few dollars. It's about a lifestyle upgrade. First off, let's clear up a common misconception. Texas is not just a flat desert. In fact, the state is full of lush, green, beautiful lakes and expansive forests. The diversity in landscape here will surprise you. The rolling hills of hill country to the stunning lakes like Lake Travis. But it's not just about natural beauty. The affordable cost of living is a huge draw. Everyday expenses like food and groceries are about 11% below the national average here, which is a breath of fresh air in a time of nationwide inflation. And let's not forget the biggest financial perk, no state income tax. That's right. Compared to California, where the income tax can eat a good chunk of your earnings, in Texas, you get to keep more of your hard-earned cash. For retirees, it gets even better. No taxes on social security, pensions, or 401ks. If you're into education, Texas won't disappoint. Some of the nation's top university call this place home. Rice University, University of Texas at Austin, Texas A&M University, and more. Finally, let's talk about housing. Compared to California, where the average home price is a whopping $695,000, Texas offers homes at an average of $306,000. Now might be the perfect time to buy. So, whether you're looking for job opportunities, top-notch education, or simply a more affordable lifestyle in a beautiful setting, Texas might be the place for you. Final thoughts. There were a lot of dinosaur skeletons, way more than I thought there was gonna be. It was really pretty. Have you ever wondered what Texas barbecue is like? Well, so have we. So we've commandeered Eric and Tracy to take us to Marty B's tonight. Texas barbecue is more than just food. It's a tradition steeped in generations of history. Well, we're here at Marty B's, if you can hear me. What you got there? Uh, drink snack. <laughs> it's a good place to start. I think I'm actually going to go for a little bit of a job. It has elderflower and lavender in it. Patience, smoke, and the finest cuts of meat come together, transforming a meal into a time-honored ritual. From the melt-in-your-mouth brisket to the fall-off-the-bone ribs and savory pulled pork, these are the dishes that define Texas barbecue. Ooh, it's spicy. If you hadn't made your way to Marty B's yet, you're missing out. And it's more than just a meal. You're missing out on barbecue heaven. But don't take my word for it. Come experience it for yourself. Well, it was kind of a shit show trying to film in there for YouTube and actually have a conversation. So, you know, we've got what we got. By that we mean carrot cake. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. This is our last dinner out here before we uh, head to Arizona. So make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. Help us out. See you guys next time.